Today on the channel, I'm going to be making Kung Lao's hat, inspired by the upcoming Mortal Kombat film. There's a link to patterns below if you'd like to make one of your own. First thing we're going to need is the number one. You're going to need six of those, and there is registration marks if you'd like to use that to help line it up. They're all cut out of six millimeter EVA foam, and they're going to be glued together with contact cement. I just cut these out with scissors, and all the cuts are straight cuts. If you're new to foam smithing, how contact cement works is you apply some to each surface that you would like to bond, then you let it sit for 15 minutes, sometimes 20, sometimes a little less, but until it's dry, at which point you can start lining up all your pieces and gluing them all together. I have a dual setting heat gun that I'm going to use to heat and round this out and try to get it as evenly round as possible since I just glued a bunch of flat triangles together. Alright, this is heated and rounded up as best I can. And next, I took and cut out four of the number two pieces. Now this here is marked as inward angle, but it's not super extreme. It's not, you know, 45 degrees off. It's more like 30. Doesn't need to be anything too extreme. And I'm going to put contact cement along here and along the sides. I only put contact cement along the sides of my number two pieces, but also around the bottom edge of the combined number ones. I assemble all four of the number two pieces. After this, I have a circle, and uh, make sure that the circle is domed up prior to pressing it down onto the combined number one pieces. Yeah, this was not the easiest, but <laughs> typically what I would do is leave this end open. I wouldn't have closed the whole ring and then lined this up with this seam and then folded my pattern in half to get a line down the center here so I know where to match up this seam so I know I'm not getting ahead of myself or behind myself. And then again this matching up with this seam and then again with the pattern to put a line down the center so I could mark where to meet up with it and then close this together last. I just had the thought since it wants to sit like this and I have my inward angled cut that if I just set this level and pushed it down I could force everything flat to my cutting mat. And then four of the number three pattern also out of six millimeter thick foam. This time however I'm not putting any contact cement on this inside part. I apply contact cement to my number three pieces and join them all together. After that I use a sharpie so that I can mark out around where to put my contact cement. I only put my contact cement around the opening for my head and the edges of the brim itself. Everything else in the middle is just kind of floating dead space. I just need those two points of attachment to help stabilize everything.
do as best I can to line up the seams on the number three combined pieces with the combined number twos. Followed by my heat gun, just to help round and smooth everything out so everything looks nice and even as possible. Okay, so this is together. I have the three on the bottom. Now the three's only here to help stabilize the two because I didn't have any EVA foam mats in my possession to use for this build, nor did I have any 10 or 12 millimeter thick foam. If you have thick foam, you don't need this three piece. All you need is the two. Next, I'm gonna heat up my number four piece and put some curvature into it. It's gonna get mounted directly on the top. I use scissors to round off the edge a little bit, save me a little trouble with sanding later. And after I get the shape heated into it that I want, I just use super glue to glue it on. And then on top of that, a two millimeter number five accent, which I did in red just so you could see it. For the edge pieces, they're number six, also six millimeter EVA foam. Prior to gluing these on, I rounded off the edges that are gonna be facing upwards. And I also rounded off the outside edge of the assembled hat itself before I begin to glue these on. I use contact cement to bond these together. This pattern piece was large enough that I had to cut it in half to fit it on an 8.5 by 11 sheet. Some of these I just didn't have long enough pieces of foam left. I had to cut them uh, as the patterns are in two pieces. I take strips of 5mm EVA foam and I use them as sort of a border just to reinforce my edge piece. I wanted the pieces to overlap offset like this just to make them a little bit stronger, especially with the super glue that I used to seal it. The number 7 pieces are 2mm EVA foam and they act as a border. Uh, I use four of them, but I... I'm going to use my Dremel rotary tool with a medium grit sanding head to shape up this edge and make it look a little bit more blade-like and also smooth out some of the seams. closer to getting finished but now I'm going to need some accents for this. I'm actually just going to use hot glue. Uh, I make some dots on a foil sheet uh, and then I take a ruler and I mark out two inches width on my foil sheet and I start to basically just draw lines with my hot glue and I want them about an inch and a half so I don't take them all the way to the edge. I really only need 12 of these and 6 of these, but I did extras just so I could pick the most consistent looking ones. I glue these on using super glue and try to get them as level as possible as I go around. With my accents on, I can finally start sealing. I'm going to seal this up with Mod Podge. It's probably not the most durable stuff, but it does have a nice grain to it. If you keep your brush strokes even, that I feel like looks really good on any sort of props I'm making that I want to replicate any sort of like metal texture.
So I guess if you don't want damage, don't throw it. Or more specifically, don't throw it into a tree. I end up using DAP Alex Plus. It's an acrylic latex with silicone to fill all the damage that I did to it. This is, of course, an unnecessary part of the, the whole build if you just don't throw it everywhere. But once that's done, I end up resealing it before moving on to primering it up with a pearlized black. It's semi-flat, but with the little metallic flakes in it, it gives it kind of a nice undershine to apply metallics over. The piece of cardboard to help catch all the overspray. This really only works if you're using an airbrush though. This definitely doesn't work with spray paint. Brush and some Model Masters Gold. Uh, I dry brush the top accent here and I do all the little accents that I glued onto the side. The sharpened edge, I just use a cloth and some pewter rub and buff. I really like this stuff. It's fun to use and it gives a little bit more of a consistent and interesting effect than dry brushing does. Well, there is four dragon patterns that go around right through here on each one of these pieces. Part of the reason why I wanted this in four sections so it'd be easier to line up. But now I have to see if I can cut this out with an X-Acto knife. So this is definitely a slow and tedious process, but it was definitely well worth it to be able to put this detail on it. You end up actually cutting out the scales. I just thought it actually looked better without it. Now let's see if this will actually work. For the stencil, I use Createx Wicked Gold and just lightly spray it on. That's going to pretty much wrap it up for this video. I'm going to get back to Scorpion soon. This is the third time I've attempted to make one of these. The first two attempts were not successful. One was a few years ago. The second one was a couple of days ago. As always, thank you for watching. And if you enjoyed this video, please leave a like. And if you're not a subscriber, please consider subscribing as it does help out the channel immensely. As always, thank you for watching and have a great day.